Hello, Craig Mathletes. So today we're going to talk about how to reduce fractions. And we're going to talk it from a theoretical standpoint. We're going to look at some tips and tricks, and then we're going to get down and dirty with the how do you actually do this? Okay. So how to reduce fractions. There have been more than one math equation. And let's just take this for instance. If I was to cut this circle into half, and then I filled up just half of this circle. Most teachers like to talk about pizza. Mm, I want pizza. Pizza sounds good. Okay, so we would agree that the whole pizza is cut into two pieces. And I'm going to use pink because that's what my bar is here. Two pieces. And out of those two pieces, one of them is filled. One half. Now, I can redraw this circle down here, and we're going to redraw a quick circle. And instead of just the one, let's cut this circle into another half. So now, how many pieces do we have? We have one, two, three, and four pieces. Four pieces. And how many of those are shaded in? Well, now we have two fourths. If I eat two fourths of a pizza, am I not also eating one half of a pizza? I am. Those are exactly the same numbers. Two fourths and one half are the same equation. Now, let's rewrite this just a little bit. We're going to go. And now that we have modeled the fact that one half and two fourth are the same equation, I want to discuss how we move back and forth between these. So if we wanted to discuss equivalent fractions, how is it that we can turn this two or the one into a two and this two into a four? Now we can multiply fractions by multiplying the top and the bottom. If you don't believe me, watch the video on multiplying fractions. If it's not out yet, it will be soon. We know that we can do that by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the value of 1. Now, if I was to multiply this by 2 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. So I'm going to multiply my numerators. 1 times 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. So we can see that this is just another version of one half. Now to simplify, to go the other direction, I need to do the opposite. And the opposite of multiplication is division. So what I need to be asking myself is what number can I divide both the top and bottom by to get a reduced number? Now, in this specific case, we see that 2 and 4 are both even numbers. So we know we can divide both of them by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 4 divided by 2 is 2. And that gives us our reduced fraction. And that's the basic premise of what we're going to be talking about. Now, there's quite a few tricks out there. I've heard different variations. Uh, one of the ones that I actually hand out in class is six questions to ask to know if a number is reduced. Those all work fine and dandy, but to get down to grassroots, what will help you 99% of the time in seventh grade math? Uh, I haven't found a problem this doesn't work in, but I know they exist in higher level math. As long as you look at these four numbers, you're probably going to reduce it correctly. Now let's take an example. Let's look at 4 over 16. Now, some of you may make a logical leap to this and divide by fours. There's perfectly fine. There's nothing wrong with that. You can make that leap. But know that if we stick with our two, because we have two even numbers, so I can divide the top by two, I can divide the bottom by two, that's going to give me what is four divided by two is two, 16 divided by two is 
eight. Now, do I have more factors I can pull out? Absolutely, because look, I still have this two. And these are even numbers. So two divided by two, eight divided by two. Now I've got two divided by two is one. Eight divided by two, that's four. Well, now I have an absolute one as a numerator. It has no other factors other than one. So I know that I am now reduced. There will be no twos, no threes, no fives, no sevens that go into this number. Now, let's try 14 over 21. I want to reduce this number. So I need to find one of my pink numbers over here, 2, 3, 5, or 7, to make this work. Now, 2. 2 will go into 14. Will 2 go into 21 evenly? No, 21 is an odd number. That doesn't work. 3. 3 will go into 21. That's 7. 3 doesn't go into 14 evenly. Okay, five. Fives, I know it's got to be a five or a zero in the end, and neither of them have a five or a zero in the end. Well, now let me look at my sevens. Seven and 14, yeah, 21 and seven, yeah. All right, so let's try our sevens. So 14 divided by seven, that's going to be two. 21 divided by seven, it's going to be three. And look, we have just factored that number down to two-thirds, and that is its simplest form. So reducing, all you have to do is keep plugging away until you can no longer factor out two, three, five, or seven, and you're going to be just fine. I believe in you. You've got this. Keep on reducing. Simplify all your answers.